We're here in lockdown in Canberra, so it's time to do a walkthrough of the Colorado. I bought this car back in 2017. It's the 2016 RG Colorado, and it's that pre-facelift model. We bought it to tow our caravan originally, and then after a little while, started to get that bug for four-wheel driving, which has started from when I was a young fella with my old man, and slowly started modifying it for off-roading. Um, so the main thing is it was a tow vehicle, it was my daily driver, still is a daily driver, but now I've slowly modified it. So it's still not crazy mods, it's pretty standard stuff. And um, yeah, let's take a look at it. So if we start with bar work, it has a unique four x four single hoop bar on it. They're on their website, you can check them out, but it's an awesome bar and it's probably the best looking bar that I've found for these cars. Um, I got some fabricated rock sliders recently, so mate Rod, uh, not sure of the business name, I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, he, he built those rock sliders, I couldn't find any off the shelf that were good. Uh, X-Rocks do a set, but they don't protect the sills that well, they sort of sit underneath, which isn't ideal. I haven't given them a good test yet, but they look pretty solid, so I'm happy with those. Suspension, so this has the Dobinson's mono tube adjustable, so the fronts are adjustable struts. I've wound them up from factory. I don't know if they all come at the same height factory, but I find it's definitely too low, so I've wound them up to sort of level the car out. I recently put in the heavy duty springs. The rears has the heavy duty springs as well. It sits a bit higher now with the heavy duty springs and handles the load way better. And I, I didn't find much difference to the ride, it was all, it was, it's fine. I bought all that from APC four wheel drive and once on our long trip when we were towing through the western New South Wales, one of the front struts blew a seal. We got on the phone to Dobinson's, they let you know to contact whoever you bought them through. APC 4 Drive just said, yeah, you send us the picture of it and send us your invoice and we'll get one on the road. And so basically we're in Broken Hill, we're heading back east and we just stopped in at Dubbo, one of the suppliers of Dobinson's there. They swapped it in and out in you know, a couple of hours and we're back on the road again. So that was all under warranty, awesome, really good. Underneath we've got the lizard skins, is it lizard skins? Uh, full three plate steel underbody protection. That's pretty heavy stuff, so I don't run the third plate very often. I leave that off most of the time. The other two are on all the time. I bought the little um, fuel filter protector. I also got some extended brake lines in the rear end. APC supplied those as well. I got the stainless steel snorkel there. That was one of the first mods I did uh, a long time ago. That was by a guy in Queensland who's no longer trading. It was snorked.com.au. Just go back a bit. You've got... Stop there, stop there. Yeah, just try and bump a bit. On the roof, there's this King's flat rack, the steel flat rack's really heavy. I'm gonna try and get an alloy one at some point, but it's the one that suits 100 series Land Cruisers, I think. I didn't use those mounts on the Facebook group for these cars. The, uh, there's a guy named Cody Thompson, I think his name is. He, he designed and um, posted the plans for some low mounts for these racks or roof racks in general. Took those plans, got some steel folded up and, and bolted that on. So the, the roof rack literally sits as low as it possibly can. 
Underneath that, there's the King's 40 inch slimline light bar. It's pretty good. Shoots a long way forward and nice spread. I'm happy with that. I mean, I'd like to get a more expensive one maybe, but whatever, <laughs> this thing does the job. On the side of the rack, I've got that awning, the Nomad by Chaos awning. So Chaos gear, you can get them online. They're good price, good quality. I used to have a King's one. This one's way better. The material's just sort of thicker and it just looks better in general. Really happy with that. I've got some steady lights that I got from APC four wheel drive on the front bar there. I probably need to adjust them, but they're, they're good in the bush. They shoot down sort of out in front and to the sides. The winch is the Dominator winch. I have no idea how strong it is or whatever. It's done a good job. I uh, used it heaps of times pulling other people. I don't think I've actually used it to drag myself out of the trouble yet. Maybe I'm not going hard enough, I don't know. One mod I did on it, which was um, one of the, the four, four by four brothers posted it online. You might've seen the video of how to wire the controls into your dash and I did that. That is absolutely the best thing you could do. You have to get out, plug into the thing at the, at the front. It's literally a rocker switch on your dash. I also put an isolator switch, which is just to isolate the rocker switch. So it's not isolating the actual winch. Inside, there's not much going on inside. I haven't done anything really. I've just got some dodgy car seat covers. The CV sits by my left leg, um, sort of screwed onto the side of the center console. The aerial on the front's a Uniden. Wheels and tires, so they're 16 inch rims with positive 20 offset. And they've just put a set of 33s, Yokohama 33s on it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Haven't had an opportunity to get out and, and drive them as yet. I went out once quickly with Shano and, and a few of the boys, Maddie and, and um, Dr. Dave, but yeah, we haven't really done a trip on them yet. The rears on these rims, so POS 20 offset, fit fine. No trouble at all, no scrub, nothing. The fronts though, they needed a bit of work, so they're in a liner of the wheel arch. That wasn't properly seated into the bull bar kind of thing, so it sort of stuck out a bit, I had to cut that off. Mud flap I've taken off, I haven't actually put that back on yet, but probably everyone knows when you want to put 33s on, you have to do a bit of cutting. Under the bonnet, there is literally no mods. Pulled the plastic cover off the top of the engine. Does that count? I haven't done the catch can or the secondary fuel filler or any of that stuff. Um, there's the standard towing bits and pieces and there's um, a feed from the alternator to the back of the car for towing. There's also a feed to the back of the car for my auxiliary battery. I've got a second battery uh, in behind the back seats. It's a nice big slimline one now. I've got a charger in the back there. It's um, the Thunder or something like that. It's not super expensive or anything, so it, but it does the job. It's got a solar input. I use a fold out solar panel. I've got all sorts of um, USB ports in the back on the side. I charge my cameras and bits and pieces. It runs the fridge and Something else, oh, an inverter. I've got a little inverter that I sit under the back seats that just sort of is there ready to plug in. In the very back, I've also got false floor that I made. I did a video on that ages ago. It works quite well. I can fit so much camping gear underneath there. I usually have things like the um, some sidewalls for the awning, my gas cooker, socket set, fry pan, tools, solar panels, all that sort of stuff. I only run the single drawer and that's got food and cutlery and all that sort of cooking, whatever else. On top of that goes the fridge. And on the side, I just run a couple of the Blue Ridge canvas bags from Chaos. So I used to run boxes, but since I've gone to canvas bags, they're just sort of, they're soft. So you can sort of mold them around and uh, throw heaps of wood on top. But in those bags, I've got all my recovery gear. I've got some tools. Usually yeah, a chainsaw usually fits in as well. I did a set of breathers. So there's front and back diff, gearbox, transfer case, and fuel tank. 
they all run into the engine bay. I did a video on those as well. The, the biggest mod and the best mod that I've done for this car is the, the rear locker, the e-locker from Harrop. I got that from APC four wheel drive as well. Got that installed locally and did the wiring myself and it is amazing it it's transformed the car like it, it drives places it never would have in the past I think I should go around that. Holy shit! The exhaust is the stock exhaust, except I cut the muffler out. Just took it to an exhaust shop and said, can you just cut that out, weld a straight piece of pipe in? And now it sounds sweet, I love it. Some of the things that have gone wrong with the car, I'd have to say there's almost nothing. I smashed a CV once, but that was my own fault. Stop, stop, stop. Oh. Found something that's not quite right. Yeah, that's not right. That's that's, a, is that, where's that's the, the good snap side. part? Yeah, that's the good oh. side. Oh. That's a bad side. Touch wood, it's generally pretty good. I, I've got the guys at Total Traction Services here in Canberra, the boys with the big rigs that we've been traveling with a few times. They do a lot of the work on it now. Oh, I did do a seal at the front of the diff there. They fixed that for me once. Couple of things, it's got dints and scratches, black paint. I just don't ever want to go there again for a four wheel drive. If you're going to take it off road, it's just white stripes all over the paint, but you know, wear them like badges or trophies. <laughs> uh, the rear bar, so the plastic bumpers missing a piece that got ripped off at Yowl um, back in the day when Shane took us down there. I don't mind the look of it, I think it looks pretty good, so. In future, there's probably two major things that I'll want to do. The first one is I'm working with Jace and Jack up there at APC 4 Drive to try and source a shock that's going to give me more travel in the rear. There's just there's nothing from factory like off off the shelf, and it's a matter of finding a body that's thin enough to fit in the small slot that you've got with a pin at the top and a, and a eye at the bottom but then those eyes have got to be the right width and then and then the diameter as well and then you know last but not least obviously a front locker that'd be cool Anyway, it's good enough. It's a tow vehicle, right? And a daily driver, so <laughs> it's And a four-wheel drive. And a four-wheel drive. I've got my little helper here. Ah, yeah. yeah, very happy with it. I absolutely love it. And as um, Shano sent a, put out a, a meme recently, if you're not walking away from your car, turning around, looking back and going, You're doing it wrong. You got you got to build a car or have a car that you love, and that, you know I've always had that. So mm -hmm. there it is. Three, two, one, go. Is this just like a practice round? No, I'm doing it. This is it. Oh, I said it wrong. That random lady over the back in there. What's she doing? She has a takeaway coffee. You know that lady could actually watch your channel, and then she'll see that. She's she in the back. <laughs> yeah. Then you might see what she, she said. Oh well, she'll be famous. I think she'd be embarrassed.